everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to cover the show Megas XLR from beginning to end in detail. So, sit back, relax, and let's jump right in. Nice! The show revolves around this dude named Coop, the ultimate Jersey boy who's all about burgers, slushies, and cars. One day, fate leads him to a mind-blowing discovery. In a junkyard, he finds a long-forgotten futuristic robot called Megas. Using his mechanical prowess, Coop manages to turn it into his own personal mecha joyride. With prior knowledge of games and cars, Coop becomes the ultimate pilot, using Megas to stop alien invasions and save the world from many other dangers. Buckle up and prepare for high-octane action and epic adventures with Coop and his turbocharged heroics. In this video, we'll discuss the entire storyline, why the show was taken off the network, and if it'll ever see the light of day again. In the year 3037, Earth is in big trouble. An alien species called the Glorfts are attacking, and Earth's last hope is this robot stolen from the aliens called Megas. So what really are these Glorfts? Well, fans suggest that the Glorfts may have a deeper connection to the show's universe beyond what's explicitly shown. Some fans speculate that the Glorfts could be future humans who have undergone significant transformations or have evolved into a different species altogether. The basis for this theory stems from the fact that the Glorft possess advanced technology and display an understanding of human culture from various time periods. Their ability to interact with and comprehend Earth's pop culture references as well as their familiarity with past events has led to speculation that they may have originated from Earth in the future. It's all but a theory, and we have no evidence to actually prove it. Anyway, Kiva, a top-notch mecha pilot of the military, sends Megas back in time to save it from being destroyed by the Glorfts. But an accident happened and Megas ends up buried in a junkyard in the year 1936. Fast forward to the early 2000s, we meet our protagonist, Coop. He stumbles upon Megas while looking for car parts. Anything in that pile, two bucks. I doubt that whole pile is worth more than two bucks. He buys it for two dollars, brings that beast back to life, and gives it some epic upgrades. He's still unaware of most of Megas' functionalities, but he'll learn new stuff as the show progresses. I don't know. That's just what it said on the controls. Anyway, Coop's best friend is named Jamie, who's a bit of a wimp. He's always chasing money or women, but deep down, he genuinely cares about Coop. Well, most of the time. Unfortunately, he easily gets distracted by shiny things and ends up being a loser. As they're testing Magus, Kiva shows up from the future and demands it back. She explains the whole time travel mess, and it turns out Magus is stuck on Earth for good, well, because Coop destroyed the time flux capacitor. Since Kiva can't pilot anymore after the numerous alterations, Coop steps up to protect our planet from future threats with his new giant robot buddy. Within seconds, Earth gets swarmed by the alien species that came from the future. But surprisingly, Coop manages to fend them off all by himself. They escape back to space, but just like Kiva, they're stuck in this time without the time flux. Kiva now has to rebuild another one using what she can find on Earth if she wants to return to her own time. Their first rival is this big shot guy named Magnanimous, who runs this galactic combat championship thing. For trivia, Magnanimous is actually voiced by Bruce Campbell from Spider-Man. Magnanimous asks him to join a tournament for some serious cash. However, when Megas keeps winning all the battles, Magnanimous starts playing dirty to make him lose. But Coop ain't having any of that. He fights off several waves of robots, throws Magnanimous into a quantum singularity, and saves the day like a boss. Later in the show, Magnanimous makes a return and puts a hefty prize on Coop. But once again, Coop ain't having any of that. He fights the robots and defeats most of them, but later discloses that there's actually no reward for defeating him, which causes the robots to turn on Magnanimous, who escapes into a portal. The robots follow him into the portal, and that's the last time we see him in the show. So, Coop decides to take Megas to a car show for some fun and games. But as luck would have it, a short circuit happens, and he's forced to remove the CPU core. The aliens up in space catch wind of it, and decide to send their troops down to Earth to attack Megas while it's vulnerable. Now, without the core, Megas is pretty much useless to those aliens. But that doesn't stop them from chasing our gang around. We'll 
take back what is rightfully mine. While all this is going on, Kiva works her magic and fixes the CPU core, restoring Megas' power. But Kook doesn't just sit around waiting for it to happen. Oh no, he takes advantage of the newly installed manual mode in Megas and starts kicking some serious alien butt. Well, maybe not the most elegant butt kicking, but you get the idea. Also, the manual control interface that Coop uses is a parody of PlayStation. Finally, with the core fixed and Megas back to full strength, Coop unleashes a barrage of firepower, sending those aliens flying back to space where they belong. During their space training, the gang accidentally crash lands on Ringworld, this huge metal ring thing that looks suspiciously like a Halo from Halo. While exploring, they discover that Ringworld is actually an intergalactic library containing knowledge about every species, including the Glorf. After facing off with some bugs, Coop accidentally knocks down one of the Ringworld's towers, triggering a catastrophic chain reaction that destroys the entire structure. With the planet in shambles, they have no info on the Glorfts. As the Glorfts develop their own mecha to rival Megas, Commander Gorath challenges Coop to a face-off. Meanwhile, Jamie finds himself on a date with a chick on Coop's beloved car, rendering him unable to pilot Megas. However, a stroke of luck reveals a secondary command bridge that allows Jamie to control Megas using a joystick. In a hilarious turn of events, Jamie unknowingly takes control of Megas and wreaks havoc in the city, causing more destruction than Gorath himself. Eventually, Megas gets captured by the aliens, but Jamie, in a moment of selflessness, flies the car on top of Megas. When Coop regains control, it's game over for Commander Gorath as he faces the full might of Megas and Coop's piloting skills. So, because Coop and Jamie have been wreaking havoc left and right with Megas, they catch the attention of a team of intergalactic heroes called the S-Force. These guys pilot their own awesome robots called Zorps and can even combine them into a Mega Robot, which is obviously a reference to Power Rangers. At first, they're all out to get Coop, thinking he's a bad guy. But after some butt-kicking action, they realize Coop's actually a good dude. Turns out, the real villain is Ender, the evil alien they've been searching for all along. Coop, being the hero he is, opens up this whirly antimatter rift that sucks Ender right in. But wait, there's a catch. Opening that rift puts the whole planet in danger. Coop quickly thinks and opens another rift, causing both the rifts to dissolve into each other and cancel out their effects. Later, we see that S-Force has picked up on Coop's bad habits, such as overeating, video games, and causing unnecessary destruction. Sometime later, there's trouble on their home turf when this big baddie named Zarek shows up and takes over their planet. The locals are like, Coop, dude, you gotta help us out! And true to form, Coop jumps into action. But you know, when Coop gets going, there's always a bit of chaos involved. Let's just say he might have caused some unintentional damage along the way. Looks like Coop's gotta do some serious damage control if he wants to patch things up and keep the friendship intact. Coop gets himself into another sticky situation. During a training session, he accidentally damages the Photonic Stabilizer, a crucial part of Megas that comes from the future. So off they go to a junkyard planet in search of what they need to fix it. But trouble never seems to be too far away. They encounter Varsin, an alien mechanic who's after Megas' time drive. Coop punches a hole right through Varsin's robot and manages to snag its stabilizer. However, there's a price to pay for their escape. The junkyard planet ends up exploding just as they make it back to Earth. Later, this hot bounty hunter alien chick named Darklos shows up to capture Coop, but the gang gives her a serious beatdown and she manages to escape. After the intense battle, they decide to unwind and head to Speedy Mart for some snacks. But Coop, being Coop, parks Megas in front of a fire hydrant in a towaway zone. You can guess what happens next. Megas gets towed and impounded. Now, Coop and Jamie embark on a mission to get Megas back, but things take a dark twist when Darklos returns. Turns out, her real target all along was Kiva. Darklos manages to extract future information from Kiva's brain and sell it for some quick cash. Meanwhile, Coop realizes his driving license has expired and he needs to pass the test at the DMV to renew it. As Kiva and Darklos battle it out, wreaking havoc across the city, Coop manages to pass the test just in the nick of time. He arrives to save the day and put an end to Darklos' evil plans. Later, Coop and the gang find themselves in the Halcyon Worlds, 
where they accidentally crash land and destroy the sacred flame of Azeroth. This really ticks off the Halcyon Emperor, who promises the title of Emperor to anyone who brings Megas to justice. Warrior Zanzor cashes in and successfully captures Megas and becomes the new Emperor. When initially attacking Megas though, he makes a reference to the 1987 film Robocop with the famous quote, Dead or alive, you're coming with me. Also, Zanzor is voiced by Peter Cullen, the same guy who voiced Optimus Prime in Transformers. Zanzor, roll out! Coop might be restrained, but don't underestimate him, because with one mighty blow, he manages to defeat Zanzor. However, his victory is short-lived, as the entire world of Halcyon comes after him. I mean, he just killed their emperor, of course they'll come after him. However, the episode time is running out, so Coop presses the 5 minutes till the end of the episode button, and suddenly Megas' hands ignite with fire. This revelation causes the former emperor to recognize Coop as the true successor, as shown in a picture of Azeroth, whose hands also held flames. Megas is declared the new emperor, and Coop, in a well-intentioned move, tries to reignite the flame of Azeroth, but it goes as well as you'd expect. Yeah, he ends up accidentally setting the whole place ablaze. As he flees, the whole planet explodes, potentially killing all of the warriors on it. While fighting the alien robots, Coop activates an unfinished teleportation feature in Megas, transporting himself directly into the heart of the Glorf space. However, this leaves Megas without a pilot. Kiva tries her best to take control, but unfortunately she crashes Megas right into the enemy ship leaving the entire gang trapped and imprisoned on board. Coop, being Coop, manages to free himself along with his friends and fights the entire Glorft army in their home ship. However, the Glorfts unleash their powerful new mech, the Karajor, capable of obliterating the entire planet. In a stroke of accidental genius, Coop teleports his slushy onto the Glorft ship control panel. The sugary concoction short-circuits the controls, resulting in the destruction of the entire Glorft fleet. Once again, Coop's unconventional methods save the world from imminent danger. Some time later, these drop-dead gorgeous alien ladies show up on Earth looking for Coop. But guess what? Jamie decides to pull a sneaky move and pretends to be Coop to win their hearts. He joins the ladies on their exploits, thinking he's hit the jackpot. And what can I say, these chicks look an awful lot like the girls from Sailor Moon? Am I the only one who sees the resemblance? Reality hits Jamie hard though when he realizes that he has to face a giant fire monster called Kurdok in Ultra Cadets' city. With sheer luck, he manages to throw him into the lava while Coop and Kiva locate him using Megas. The girls mistake Coop for a villain and start fighting him, but let's be fair, they're no match for Coop. They later learn the truth and let the gang go, but as soon as they leave, Kurdok emerges from the lava. Turns out, he gained additional strength after being knocked down into the volcano, and now the whole city is at stake. Leave it to Coop and Jamie to make things worse than they already are. Oh, no. Sometime later, Coop stuck babysitting his cousin Skippy, hoping to impress him with Megas. But Skippy is too cool for Megas and couldn't care less. However, when the Glorfts return to destroy Earth, Coop and Skippy team up to face Glorfts' wrath. Coop had previously knocked them into outer space, but now they're back with much stronger weapons and their plan is to crash a missile into the moon. Together, they learn the value of teamwork and defeat the Glorft. Coop and Skippy save the world, only for Coop to accidentally press the trigger and initiate the missile. Once again, with sheer luck, he manages to destroy the missile and save the planet. Does this man ever do anything intentionally? Anyways, Coop and Jamie are like, hey, let's take a break and hit up Las Vegas. They're all excited for some chill time, but things go totally off the rails when Coop decides to sneak into Area 50, which is obviously a reference to Area 51. Turns out, that place was sealed off for a reason, because there's this massive robot inside that's hell-bent on sucking up all the electricity Vegas uses. And obviously, Coop is going to set him free. Coop uses his uncanny piloting skills to turn off, or rather destroy the main power supply of the city and save the world once again from the danger he caused in the first place. Classic Coop. During a space mission, the gang gets sucked into a ship where they meet Captain Warlock, who has a thing for redhead chicks. Kiva learns that Warlock has a spare time drive on his ship 
and follows him into the back room in hopes of going back to her time. Turns out there wasn't any time drive to begin with, and all Warlock wanted was to keep Megas for himself. Coop and Jamie are restrained by the guards, so Kiva, being the redhead of the group, gives herself up to free her friends. Soon after, she gets overrun by the guards, so Coop and Jamie return to kick their asses and save Kiva. These three have really bonded throughout the show. Guess who's back? The Glorfts. And this time, they've cooked up a sneaky plan. They've developed a device that lets them blend in as humans. Their big scheme is to track down a lady named Ali, who happens to be a distant ancestor of Kiva. Why? Well, if they can eliminate Ali from this timeline, it'll wipe out Kiva from existence too. And without her, the Glorfts think that they'll have free reign in the past and future. Sneaky little buggers, aren't they? But don't worry, the gang gets a hunch of their plans just in time, and Coop kicks some Glorfed ass while this rock metal concert plays in the background. The whole episode, in fact even the name of the episode, was a reference to the movie Terminator. During another training session, the gang crashes into this random planet and a robot attacks them, thinking they're invaders. Coop takes it down, but guess what? That robot was actually a guardian protecting its turf. Good job killing the only thing that was protecting this otherwise defenseless planet. Turns out, another group of alien robots called Cerulean shows up, looking to attack the planet and wipe out the local inhabitants called the Cryox. Coop, being the hero he is, jumps into action and takes on those bots. He saves the Cryox from certain doom, but guess what? In the process, Coop accidentally destroys planet Searle, which kept the Cryox cool and comfy. So now, these yeti-like aliens are stuck living on tropical beaches instead of their frosty paradise. Leave it to Coop to make things worse when he's trying to make them better. Coop, Jamie, and Kiva accidentally teleport themselves to this planet which is filled with brainwashed robots. Coop tries to knock some sense into a robot labeled 32, but it gets shot down immediately by some guards. Magus and 32 end up in this facility where 32's memories are wiped clean. They try to do the same with Megas, but Megas isn't a regular robot with feelings, so the memory wipe doesn't work. The guards then try to grind Megas up, but Kiva comes to the rescue just in time. Coop then destroys the mind-controlling robot which sets all of them free, but as it turns out, that planet was imprisoning criminal robots, one of which is inspired by Coop to attack the Earth. In the end credits, we see its eyes turn blue, which hints that the Warden was able to fix the mind-controlling machine later on. Also, this whole episode was a parody of an old series titled The Prisoner. Sometime later, Glorfts attack the Earth once again, but Gorath and Coop end up teleported into this alternate dimension in which the whole city of Jersey is destroyed. Soon after, the two get surrounded by dozens of robots and are put in prison for their invasion. Turns out, the robots are part of a resistance led by none other than Jamie, who looks extremely hot in this dimension, by the way. He's been trying to catch Coop ever since the war started, which does not make sense to him as he just arrived in this dimension. Anyways, Gorath and Coop, who have been bitter enemies throughout the show, find themselves forced to work together in order to escape a dire situation. As they make their way back to their mechs, Coop attempts to reason with Jamie and put an end to the chaos. However, the plot takes an unexpected twist when it's revealed that Coop and Ava are actually the sources of evil in this particular dimension. The good Coop tries to face his evil counterpart head on, but he's much stronger, which results in Megas being destroyed in the fight. However, Coop is saved by Gorath, who needs him to go back to their own dimension. Jamie explains that evil Coop used to be the good guy, who defeated the Glorfts years ago but his craving for battle led him to not only conquer other planets, but also to leave Megas behind. Kiva followed him every step of the way to return to the future, but she also lost sight of her goal and turned evil. We also see a picture that tells us Ava and Jamie eventually started dating before she turned evil. Poor guy lost both his girlfriend and his best friend in the war. Also, according to some fans, there's a time loop theory suggesting that Coop's future may mirror the evil path taken by his counterpart in another dimension. This would create a cycle where Coop from the past or an alternate dimension intervenes to prevent his own tyranny. It's a grim fate to imagine, with Cooper trapped in an endless loop fighting against his own darkness. 
Anyways, while the good Koop is stealing evil Koop's Megas, the evil Koop sends his army to the Earth to destroy it all over again. However, Gorath and Buff Jamie team up with our Koop and overwhelm his army. While he's returning to his own dimension, Buff Jamie destroys the gate from the other side, causing evil Koop and Ava to be stuck in time permanently. In the aftermath, Gorath attempts to befriend Koop, but a mishap occurs, resulting in Koop inadvertently obliterating Gorath's entire army. Vowing revenge, Gorath swears to return in the future. You must have noticed that the last two episodes were much darker in tone than the rest of the series. This style was mainly chosen because the creators knew the show was ending and wanted to end it on a high note. Man, it's such a bummer that Magus XLR got the short end of the stick. Despite having awesome ratings and a dedicated fanbase, the network had other shows in mind for the younger crowd, like Ben 10 and Teen Titans. They wanted a different vibe, and sadly, Megas XLR didn't fit their vision. But let me tell you, this show had serious potential, especially for its plans for a killer third season. We would have learned more about the mysterious Glorft and dive deeper into their origins, but we couldn't get the chance. It would have been mind-blowing, though. Sure, the cancellation was a downer, but never say never. Imagine if Adult Swim swooped in and revived Megas XLR. That would have been a dream come true, right? So who knows? Maybe one day we'll see Coop and the gang back in action. Let's keep our fingers crossed and hope for the best. So that'll be it from us. If you enjoyed the video, then leave us a like and subscribe to our channel for similar content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.